Okay, so just to say something, a couple more. So, so this is kind of a, uh, extended systems, kind of a detail. <coughs> We're going to need to, uh, to be able to not just say allow, this allow to, to uh, external write operations. Sometimes we're going to need uh, to actually kind of let go there into execution and change the identity of uh, uh, who sent what, because we're going to kind of, we're going to have to cheat the environment that it's talking to uh, this guy, not to this guy. Then we're going to have to be able to change on its messages that it thinks it's sending to this, it's actually sending to that, because otherwise it won't be able to do whatever it want to do. But this is a technical detail. Um, but something that is, uh, is things that are actually so, uh, a little bit more interesting. So, so what does it mean to be a subroutine of somebody else? So there's a the technical uh, uh, um, uh, definition. It says that some uh, uh, machine instance is a subroutine of another one if uh, uh, mu wrote to the subroutine output of, uh, of uh, mu prime or mu prime wrote to the input of, of mu. Right? So there is such a relation. This, this I'm saying this is a subroutine of this. So this road to that, or this road to the input of this. So this is this is a subroutine of, uh, of 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 this. Okay, it's going to be uh, useful to talk about it. So something which is less obvious uh, is what is a protocol or a protocol instance, right? So so we we are talking here about a completely structureless system, uh, a system of machines that are talking to each other in some way with arbitrary codes, dynamically generated. So what is a protocol? How can I uh, delineate a protocol in that in that system? Okay, yeah. Now I want to uh, to decide what, what's a protocol. So uh, um, it's a set of uh, I, so so what a protocol? What's a protocol instance? So it kind of seems hard to try to delineate what it is. Uh, so, so I think the only thing that makes sense is they're very simple syntactic basic things. Uh, so, so say the protocol is just a machine, just a code. And this is going to be the program, I'm thinking of it, it's going to be the program of all the machines that are in this protocol, they all run the same program. Right? So they may have different roles or whatever, but never mind. So uh, all the, uh, uh, a protocol is the program, is the static program for, for all the machines that want to be in a protocol. Uh, and maybe more interesting, what's a protocol instance? So, so we, we, that this is like the, the, the runtime uh, uh, object of, uh, of, uh, of a protocol of a bunch of parties that actually talk to each other and have like a common goal or something. They want to do something together. These guys are a protocol instance. So how, we, how can we define or delineate such a thing? And it's kind of completely amorphous. So let's do something simple. Let's say that uh, an instance of a protocol is, uh, is a bunch of, uh, of machine instances that have the same program, P, and have the same part of the ID, which is the session ID. Somehow they decided, or the guys who created them decided that they're going to be a protocol instance, and the way to say it is to have, they have the session ID. Right? So that's, uh, uh, that's how you syntactically define what's a protocol instance. Okay? Uh, just to say that now, if uh, you're in the system, you're writing a program here, and you want to kind of make somebody a uh, bunch of uh, programs to run together, just give them the same session ID. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, so slightly uh, uh, again more technical. Uh, if you want to get into polynomial time, so how would you define polynomial time here? Right. So usually uh, uh, we want to define polynomial time as we learn as a function of the length of the input. But now if you just define it something machines to be polynomial in the length of the input, then we're going to get uh, kind of crazy things because people write to the input of each other and create new machines. And you can actually very easily get unbounded copy running time. You want to some, do something more meaningful. So, so here's, again, a simple uh, uh, mechanism that actually bounds the, uh, uh, the runtime of the whole system. So uh, uh, say that a machine is polynomial time. If the runtime is bounded by a polynomial in some value, capital N, where capital N is what? Is, uh, uh, is the number of bits that were written to the input tape of that machine. OK, the input tape is kind of arbitrary tape uh, uh, of that machine, minus the number of bits that M wrote the input tapes of other machines, including the machines that it uh, created, etc. OK? So uh, as you can see, you can verify that uh, if all the machines in the system are polynomial in this definition, and they're all bounded by the same polynomial, or there's polynomial that bounds all of them, uh, then the system holds within polynomial time. 
okay? Assuming that the control function runs in polynomial time, which assume, let's assume it is. Right, so, every, so, the, so this is just, uh, uh, again, a technicality. Um, and we also want to talk about parameterized system, the system where all the machines get inputs, which are at least some polynomial length, so there's no big disparity between the input lengths of different machines. Uh, but that's, again, a technicality. Um, okay. So th th that was essentially it as far as the basic model of how machines interact, right? So there's nothing much to it, but just something to say. And it's completely asynchronous and decentralized as, as, as you saw. Okay.